summer season as we continue our Star Guardian week and close out the first half of the split. The league is closed as ever, so every game counts, as we used to say, was an old time. Super nice to see the audience again and super nice to have you again also joining me today, various trouble as we see the players going in for the first game, SK and Excel getting ready for day two. We had an amazing demo and I can't wait to see what we have you know, if today. you've never seen the LEC before, what can we guarantee you? Well, we can guarantee you cute anime girls, cute anime boys, <laughs> combine them together to make ultimately some cute and awesome League of Legends on right. the Rift. Because we had some awesome games yesterday. We're guaranteed some more awesome games today. And how can you not be hyped? As you rightly said, we're reaching that halfway mark. It'll be a banger day again. And yesterday, as we saw, the results have been shaken up in the standings even more than they already were. Look at this. Let's put up the standings here in mind. EU really loves their ties, and we see it once again. Everything is close. There's only one win between second and eighth, Betty. It's 
kind of crazy. Uh, Europe has had this tendency of having surprisingly close regular seasons, and summer seems to be the victim of that. When teams Again. have a lot more time to be able to build as a roster, you often see teams leveling up, especially as we get closer and closer, or uh, further and further into the split, rather. But I wasn't expecting this. I felt like coming into week four, we had a very clear top of the table and then the bottom four. But now, with all the upsets that were happening yesterday, uh, yeah. the standings have really shaken up. I think a lot of things can change in this league. Kings, dynasties are changing. One thing that will always remain the same is Rogue finding themselves at the top of the table every regular season. They've managed to get themselves up at 6-2, and two, sole possession of that first place. And honestly, they have not done it through a flashy way, but they've done it through traditional Rogue way, getting control of these lanes, specifically the bots are the map, Comp and Trimby with a 2 vs 2 kill. They've got the Kalista in the hands, the snowball that early game through the lanes. And then this turns into impeccable team fighting as well. I think it was so clever. I was doubting it, but it was so clever from Malran jumping onto the Tom Kent. If you're there to save people, who's going to save you? I think that Rogue, given all of the chaos that we had yesterday, brought a little bit more normality into the league, especially with the composition they brought. Something that I wasn't really expecting them to bring out. Like, Surtis and I had some questions on the desk yesterday about their draft, but they executed it flawlessly. The Gwen is immune into Gwen is invulnerable, and so <laughs> Gwen is now chopping you to little pieces. What like, it was crazy execution from Rogue, and it feels like that they are back to winning ways and on form. But they were really the only consistent part that we had yesterday, because we had a surprising amount of upsets. It was super interesting. Interesting, especially when you think of Fnatic losing to Misfits. I mean, we came into the day saying, of course, Fnatic is favored. They had a three-game winning streak. Misfits always manages to pull the upsets when we least expect it. And they did it again. Trouble. I feel like that. Look again, the Amobo popped in from the what's these picks yesterday. You see champion, you queue champion, you queue them again. You pop your ultimate in these very short width places that you play the team fights. Amobo ultimate is such a strong tool to isolate targets, kill the targets. And I think Misfits through impeccable team fighting, they use the tools onto their Amumu to try and isolate members this all fanatic to the point where Vitio was finding flax on the back line onto that Caitlyn and due to the lack of hard CC they could just not stop that Akali. I think there's like a lot that can be talked about when it comes to this game but I think the biggest takeaway for me is Misfits have found an identity once again mm -hmm. which is their winning ways from last split going for more of that scaling team fight approach it's not about early game dominance it's not about trying to build these early game leads and then being able to play the map perfectly no they're just all about that crisp execution mechanical brilliant and just really standout talent. And again, props to Vito, props to Mercer. The whole team is stepping up individually. And I think that if we can continue to see these team fighting successes, Misfits will continue to be a wild card in the LEC. It was amazing to see. And I mean, they entered the week with a very difficult schedule when you think about it. Fnatic and G2 today. But coming back to G2, man. What was that game for Yeah, <laughs> what was that game? Because I feel like that we're continuing to see these early game issues. Dylan said quite clearly, you know, in week three, we had some early game problems, but it won't happen again. And what happens? Caps get solo killed, then they lose a 2v2 mid jungle duel again, and it feels like that SK coming in with something fresh, but G2, there are clearly some big question marks around what they're doing in the early game that teams are very quick to exploit. But looking at the winners, Jesus resurrected, SK reinvented trouble. Their, their draft was really cool to see. He took his break, he comes back, first time Draven down the bot lane, they went straight for the aggression. I feel something that I was personally very judgmental of in the SK was drafts. Very stagnant, very stale, very boring, very old school. They went from having three inactive lanes to having three completely active lanes with a very proactive jungler in the likes of Poppy. You would see Gilius, Gilius would get a kill on the map. When you think about G2, again, uh, Betty, should we be worried about them? Three games, losing streak now, they're facing misfits today. I would be worrying going to this matchup. Personally, I wouldn't be too worried yet. Yeah. We have to remember that G2 did finish fourth at the end of regular season in spring, and they were they ended up becoming the champions, right? So they're a team that do have the highs and lows. I do have confidence in both the team and the coaching staff to be able to <laughs> identify their issues and evolve. And I think one of the biggest things is their ability to adapt to the meta. And I know that like we have some... Interesting thoughts on their ability to adapt. We heard Treats talking a little bit about it yesterday, mm -hmm. where basically it seems that G2 are a little bit slow to pick up what other teams seem to find very strong on the most recent patch. Staying on the topic of the patch, exactly. We have three champions here because we saw the return of Silas yesterday, a champion that we've seen so far in LEC Summer. Not so much success, but he found success yesterday twice trouble as a flex pick.
And I think it was very problematic and difficult to play Salas into like Aziz, Korkis and Victors that would technically bully him out of lane. But now this champion is coming back to provide two things. Flexibility in the draft. We saw him mid lane. We also saw him bo uh, top lane. And also he provides so many engaged and disengaged tools. The fact that your team doesn't necessarily have to go for the Orns or the Nars or the Gragasis, but the fact that you lock in the Silas into them means that you can provide your team with a very long range engage whilst not having to necessarily draft for it. A lot of teams seem to just consider Silas to be a very safe and flexible pick right now. The fact that he has a relatively safe laning phase, he scales very well, and there are so many good ultimates for him to steal. Yeah. We saw a high prior uh, priority on Orn mm -hmm. and Nar and GP. He loves all those ultimates. Uh, you can also steal like a bunch of like Azir ultimate is also great to steal. Like there's, there's so many options for the Silas in the current meta that it seems that teams will continue to highly prioritize him as the rest of the world already seems to be doing so. Another champion that we still keep on seeing. I mean, we, that we saw the return of yesterday was Akali, again, a flex pick. We haven't seen the champion so much between the week one and three, but I mean, look at this. Again, yeah. searches flashing with the soul kill. It's always been a bit of a European special, the uh -huh. Akali answer into Azir. Not that they're exclusively known for it, but typically mid laners in Europe love to take that more skill matchup. And it seems that given a little bit more time to think about it, play a little bit more on the patch, European mids are saying, you know what, I feel confident on this champion to be able to take it into harder matchups. And while you do lose prior in the early levels, at level six, you have a lot of kill threat and you have to be willing to play around that. And it was great to see SK leveraging that. We saw it from VTO as well yesterday. And I think this is something that many European mid laners will look to continue to pick up and get a little bit more skirmish heavy and fight already to fight rather in the early game. <laughs> I thought you would have to say I have nothing about else to Kali, say about Kali, yeah, man. It's like, the champion goes brr, level six. They have a very proactive, she's aggressive She's got a new jungler. skin coming out. Yay. What a coinky dink. Wow. Could you imagine? <laughs> Everything was planned. But... I, I should have added the hashtag ad on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Last champion we have on the table. You were mentioning EU special, Vidi, and I think Orn is also an EU special. Super useful champion when it comes to finding engages with the ult, especially. And this champion was picked twice yesterday. This is the best form of engage we can find right now. Yeah, right? it seems like one of the best go-to blind pick tops right now. This is the similar case earlier on in the split as well, but the, the concern I have around Orn is that domestically, he often does very well. Internationally, I think it's a bit of a band-aid to solve what could be a big top lane issue that Europe might be facing. Of course, it's too early to tell, but while he does work in team fights, I think there are alternative options that can shut him down. But for the time being, he's working well for many European teams. Man, I just really love seeing the buildy boy. As I have mentioned previously, and a lot of other people have mentioned previously, this this guy loses lane, but he does it so gracefully. He's very hard to dive. He's very hard to push off of his lane. He scales really well later on, and he becomes that meat shield in front of your team. He has the most reliable long range engage out of any other champion. And also when he does reach that late mm -hmm. game, he gives ornaments to your team. So the scaling comes in for your team as well as himself. Yeah. So. I like Buildy Boy. He seems to be working in the UA. Let, let them have it, Betty. <laughs> and I think we'll keep on seeing it today, especially, but fitting with our meta discussion, we asked the pros what they would like to see buff, nerfed, or straight up removed. Let's take a look at what they had to say. Buff, nerf, remove. Okay, I mean, do I need to be like completely delusional or can I be like realistic? I mean, I'd buff early and soul. I think he's, I mean, he's just been really bad. He's not been played in probably, I think, at all last year, probably, at least like the major regions. I would like to buff Devin and give him 200 attack level one. There is nothing to buff, I think. I'm very happy about the League of Legends states. I wouldn't buff anything. I would buff like uh, AP, AP items for junglers, like burst junglers, that they have some items they, they can buy where they are as strong as the other champs in the meta. But right, right now it's a bit stuck in the, like everyone needs Red Smite, everyone needs Sandra or God Drinker, because Red Smite is just too broken. Red Smite, God, nerf Red Smite. Re use remo actually, remove or nerf, nerf Red Smite, okay. I would nerf something that's Red Smite. It's just like uh, three summoners in one, you know? Like heal, uh, exhaust, and uh, ignite. So yeah, well played. It's just so broken. You have like damage reduction, you have like speed, uh, like you can just, uh, you have true damage, like, oh my god, what is this, you know? It's like, it, it doesn't make any sense that the genre should just have the luxury of having an exhaust and ignite on a 70 second cooldown. That's also secure objectives, like, what, what, what's up with that? So, I would nerf jungle roll. What I would do is put walls, like he can only farm his jungle camps until like minute eight. So he only, like he can't leave his jungle, which of course, will, it would buff like champions like characters and stuff, but you cannot get ganked 
which is like pretty nice. Actually, just nerf Guild Force. I don't like AD carries having a dash. It, it doesn't feel right. I feel like they should die if they get hit by stuff. That's my philosophy. I would nerf Zoe still. This champion is just should not exist. Maybe nerf dragons, like the, the buff they give, or like make them less important. I would delete Irelia. It's super annoying, and I'm not very good at it. So I want it removed. Most annoying champs are like probably Timo, Shaco, like the invisible one. Like Evelyn, how can I supposed to dodge his ganks? Like my wards are not working. I have to like smell him or something, it's impossible. Maybe I wanna change it to Irelia to Evelyn actually. So if no one likes the, the walls, then jungle role is deleted. And yeah, I will have to get rid of jungles, which makes me really sad, but it has to be done. Jungle role has been broken since release and it needs a punishment, you know. It's just remove jungle. <laughs> so what happens? You just kick Razork off the team. Yeah, jungle is gone. He can become like some coach, get like a coaching position. I yeah. think that works. What's the most annoying champion they ever play against? Yumi. Yumi needs to be gone. That's a solid one. I was thinking about this one. I think I would just remove Yumi. Yeah. The champion is just so annoying, and it, I don't think it should be allowed that you have to press this little buttons in the game and still win. Be like a minimum amount of button presses that Yumi is for sure under. I hate playing with Yumi. I hate playing against it. It's just healing and my girlfriend is a Yumi one trick almost so she's gonna hate me for this but I don't care. Get that chap out of here. Yumi, wow, could you believe that people shocking. don't like that? Shocking. Shocking. That people don't like I am shocked. They're just dog people, it's fine. Right. <laughs> but, okay, let's play the game ourselves though. What would I'm you down. like to see buffed, nerfed and removed? Very gonna start with you. Okay. Uh, well, I think that they should buff Nocturne mid. Uh, <laughs> no way. I Very think. shameless. Yeah, no yeah. So I think that I'm biased, but listen, okay, here's what happened. I was telling pros for years that Nocturne solo lane was OP, and they were like, you're an idiot, Betty. And then what happened? They started playing it in pro. Everyone realized how OP was. And then, of course, Riot was like, oh, we should nerf that. And then they nerfed his passive, and now you can't lane anymore. And he's Gosh. not a real champion. So, Rito, buff. Uh, invisibility <laughs> needs to be nerfed. I annoying. like playing against things that I can see. When I can't see them, I die. So tying into that, we should then remove Shaco because that champion is not balanced. He cannot come level two, level three, level four, level five, level six mid lane and keep killing me. You're not allowed, okay? Shaco players, stay away from my lane. I will perma ban you and you are not welcome here. I think you have an issue with vision there and wards. I have an issue with Shaco. An issue with <laughs> okay. solo queue also. Ba basic issues in solo queue. But I, I, I heard that you were heard. Very moving to you, trouble. What do you have in stock for us? Right. I'm guessing Katarina. Yeah, ah, of course. Okay. okay, I mean, come on, guys. I would for sure buff Katarina because. Are you like, a mod on our Katarina mains? Is that what you are? <laughs> <laughs> because, <laughs> like Vedi has been saying to all pros for so long how good Nocturne Meat was, Katarina is absolute shite at this point. And. Champions like Zed, Yasuo, very high skill ceiling, uh, Assassin-like are really fun to watch in pro play. So yeah. Katarina would be one of them mm -hmm. getting to watch her in pro play. What do I get? A nerf. And when everyone actually starts complaining, then finally she gets a little bit buffed in the early game. Now, back to what I would remove, a nerf, the durability patch. No one needs extra HP. People oh, just really? need to very quickly die. Yes, right. You miss them, you get punished. Right. That's how it should be. What an so, you assassin want, so you want your you want your Katarina assassin to be buffed and everyone Supreme else to be weaker. But it gets, but it gets better, <laughs> right, guys. Yeah. So I think someone said on the on the video, I don't remember that they would remove jungle and I 100% mm -hmm. agree with that. Yeah. But because my champion is very weak in the early game right. and it needs the ganks to start snowballing, I will just remove Graves completely because this guy is the most selfish jungler I've ever seen in the game. You ask really? him for ganks, he ignores you. He's like, I'll see you 40 minutes in when I have three items. We don't need this in our games. We need to be snowballing level two, level three, level four, level five, like Shaco does. And that's my list. Chaco the taco. All right. That's what you remember. Chaco, Chaco the taco. taco. All right, moving to me. You guys are going to be really surprised not to see any Zyra buff requests. Just because, being fully honest, I think the champion is really bad and she needs a full on rework. So oh. waiting for that, I want to focus on buffing Elise. You want to buff We've, Elise? We, I miss jungle. I miss, I miss AP jungle. Do you miss getting one I shot and tower dives. dive? That's I what you miss. I miss dives. That was, Honestly, yeah, this, this champion makes the game really healthy, I think. Does she? Yeah, <laughs> she does. <laughs> and all these tower dives, Betty? Come on. Okay, uh, all <laughs> I can think of is all the AD carries and the top laners right now. They're like, oh yeah, let's buff Elise. I love getting tower dives to level three. They should <laughs> get better at the game. You <laughs> <might> <laughs> see, where it was like slice and dice from Renekton into Cocoon, into you died, and then she repels to miss all the damage. You're a mid laner, aren't you, Lord? You're a mid laner. Depends. Yeah. Depends. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, to finish on the, the resets mechanics, I hate Viego. I was traumatized by Viego, and I think this mechanic should be nerfed. And of course, 
Herx said it himself, dropping the F-bombs, of course, but Yumi needs to go. We don't need her in don't the game. Don't you have she two cats? I love my cats. I'm a proud cat mom. Yep. I don't like other people's cats, oh, okay. <laughs> especially this oh, one. I see. Okay. Staying on the topic of perks, Vitality and Fnatic will be playing tonight and they're looking to bounce back from disappointing losses yesterday as they will clash in our LG Ultra Gear match of the week. I think it's impossible not to have an ego in League of Legends because you have to believe in yourself. There will always be circumstances where you need to know that you are better and you need to trust. And when the risk comes through, you need to trust in your abilities that you're going to do better because players who don't believe that they can do better, believe that they will just perform worse, are bad players. This might sound a little bit crazy, but I've never really played against anyone where I thought like, wow, this guy's like way better than me. And I played basically versus all the players in the world. I can see somebody's better on the champion than me, but I don't really feel like I played with someone and he was just so much better than me and just completely stomped me and I couldn't do anything. still doing work here is upset, just cleaning up the fight, somehow got the triple, somehow got the Upset's a bit of a heartbreaker because to me, he's a guy that has been so good. He never dies. He puts up good damage numbers. He has great CS numbers. Like these are all things that you want in an AD carry. And yet it's not enough to win. And it's not a situation where he's playing too safe or maybe not taking enough risks, or at least that's not how it looks from the outside. It just feels like there's something missing there that is holding him back from achieving those greater heights. There's none of it for Vitality. There's none of it for perks. Vitality coming into this year definitely had an ego. The expectations were completely overblown. I think right now, and our new mentality is like, oh, we are a top five team. Let's try to get top one, right? And every time I've told like this in the past as well, I had pretty good success. I'm still looking to find that success together with my team, right? Which is the saddest part, because I feel like I'm just struggling so much when I don't know actually why it's so hard, right? We're not the best team in Europe. We want to be. I don't think we are far away. What matters in the end is like who takes the title, right? I think when you look at both these teams, ultimately they're both chasing a trophy. But right now, Vitality are the ones that are lagging behind. And while Fnatic try to find their way into the top three, Vitality need to find their way into the top five, the top four. Fnatic should be the favorites here. Fnatic is the safer bet, but it still does not feel like a sure thing. You can also see it as a positive thing that people expect him to win or be like top two or whatever. You can also see it from the positive side. It's like people really expect me to do so well. That must mean they think that I should be that good. Ah, super difficult to predict who will come out on top here because both teams suffered from a loss yesterday. Super close in the standings, but I guess that's the case for the whole LEC. They're fighting for playoffs, of course. But when you think of Fnatic and Vitality, both teams have super strong laners, super strong individualities. But I think if you have to focus on a specific matchup, it has to be the mid lane, Betty. Yeah, it certainly is. I think that when we look at Fnatic and Vitality, obviously both have kind of their, their highs and their lows. Uh, but I think the thing that stands out to me are these two mid lane players. Like, Laning-wise, they are two of our most aggressive players. Like, you can look at some of their damage numbers, you can look at the gold differences, the CSDs in particular, the advantages they're actually able to build up in their isolated lanes is pretty incredible. And I think that they get a lot of flack because sometimes they just make this play that doesn't seem to make sense. Mm -hmm. It almost looks like they're just straight up inting, but I think that when the chips are down and when things start to fall apart, these two players are the ones that try and make that hero play that can turn the game around. And to be fair, they're both champions. And I think a championship quality is a player that is willing to put everything on the line mm -hmm. in order to take that opportunity that can swing the game back in your favor. And I think that sometimes these two players will look to show that. And I think that they've tried to do it multiple times this split, which is why uh, in this matchup for me, these two are the players that really stand out. It's always a thin line between being an incher and actually being a genius in yeah. lane. So yeah, they're sourcing on this line. But that's a story for tonight, of course, because we're going to take a look at the schedule. And wow, before yesterday's game, I would have said that looking at the schedule and the matchups we have today, this looks to be one of the most one-sided days we had in LEC summer so far, but trouble 
After the madness and day of upsets we had yesterday, I don't know what you think anymore. Which matchup should we keep our eyes on? And game in particular? I'm keeping my eyes on the first and second, uh, because a lot of people were looking at fourth and fifth, but I think first and second, if you look at Excel, they came in like a wrecking ball, smashed themselves onto a wall yesterday. <laughs> so are they going to be bouncing back today? Whilst on the other hand, SK, we're like this little dog meme where he's sipping tea on his little table. He's like, it's fine with all the fires uh, <laughs> over in the back. So I feel like this will be a really cool matchup to see if SK will continue winning this weekend and if Excel will go on the first 0-2 weekend also. And Mad versus Astralis. Astralis coming back from huge gold deficits and also Mad are pretty good at building gold leads for themselves. So technically both teams in their comfort zone and both teams won yesterday as well. I'm expecting surprises in any matchup, honestly, looking at the schedule today. But focusing on the first game we have after the monumental throw yesterday from Excel, they're looking to bounce back in their opening match against SK Gaming. And Quick Shot is now joined by Patrick to tell us what happened in that game. Take it away. Thank you so much, Law. I am joined by Patrick, and I want to talk a little bit about draft, uh, talk about what happened yesterday. Let's start with uh, the defeat. You know, how did it play out, and, and why did it go so wrong? Yeah, I think yesterday we were a bit too slow uh, in the game. We didn't realize that uh, in the late game team fights they would beat us 5v5. They just had, uh, like, Oriana Ash against Kalista. It's a bit hard to play. So I think we also weren't really on the same page, and we just didn't manage to snowball properly and end the game. Now, a lot of the commentary and things that we were talking about was how, as you mentioned, the draft was difficult to play out, short range, dealing with that Oriana was hard. Is that something that's difficult to adapt to between days and between opponents? Uh, it's just, I feel like when you pick Kalista, you kind of have to be ready for this. Uh, she's very hard to deal with during laning phase and early fights, but you can outrange her and try to kite her out. So. I think you just have to be ready for it and uh, be prepared. Okay, we'll see how it plays out today and what the draft is going to look like. What did you think of yesterday's results? I'm not sure if you managed to see the games yet, but looking at the fact that Astralis were able to pick up the win, SK being able to pick up the win, Misfits taking down Fnatic, what do you think is a reason for why we saw so many upsets? Uh, I'm not sure. You know, it was really weird yesterday. Like, uh, I feel like most of the teams that were supposed to win uh, lost. It could be something with uh, the break. I think the stronger teams maybe didn't practice as much compared to the weaker teams. Whereas uh, I think SK, for example, they practiced uh, the whole two weeks. So maybe they just have uh, stronger momentum right now. Let's talk a little bit specifically about that SK draft. Something the analyst desk are discussing and expanding on is how the team has changed and adapted throughout summer. But yesterday, looking at the Silas, the Akali, the Draven, is that something that you think can work in the current meta? I think what SK did yesterday was just pick their comfort, to be honest. They, I feel like they picked Poppy 1 2, you know, not exactly uh, the best blind jungler, I would say. They also picked the Draven. So I think they just uh, practiced certain compositions and then they just went with it on stage and uh, it worked well. It really did work well. Now, for you guys turning it back to XL, one of the surprise stories after making playoffs in spring and now starting so well in summer, what will go right for your team today in order to pick up the win? Uh, today we will. Uh, oh, we will stay on the same page, we will play together, and uh, I think we'll be more confident than yesterday. More confident, more proactive, that's what I'm looking for. Thank you so much, Patrick, best of luck. We're gonna head back to the analyst desk to carry Thank on you. the show. Thank you, quick shot, nice to hear from Patrick. More confidence on the side of Excel. I think something else was missing yesterday, but we'll get to that later. Uh, trouble first, let's talk about SK, because they came in, treat said it, with super high confidence, especially bouncing back from the scoreline they had. They were creative in drag, bringing in the Poppy and the Draven, and this played out so well for them. Yeah, and I think I was one of the first ones to slam down the hammer of judgment when it came mm -hmm. to their drafts. Very stale, very boring, very outdated, very predictable. And I feel like they, ha they went from three non-active lanes which you couldn't play from to three extremely active lanes that want to fight, that can provide you with CC and can provide you with opportunity to actually get in. Silas after level six can steal Nar ult. He can provide you CC and lockdown. Uh, after level six, we discussed it with Eddie as well. You have kill potential with Akali, bot lane, extremely aggressive. Draven and Nautilus. Draven wants to be cashing in on this passive goal that he's stacking with all of these minions. And of course, when you have Gilius onto the poppy, the dives that came in, everywhere Gilius was on the poppy, there was a kill going down. And it was a whole different look that we saw where they were willing to take that proactive early game mm -hmm. and run away with it. Yeah, more agency on their side, which is not something we can say about Excel, Vidi. 
was difficult for them to navigate with this draft, yeah. even if they had a good year. I mean, we heard it from Patrick, right? Yeah. He he very much said himself that it was difficult to play the later into the game when I'm surprised that he said that we didn't realize that they would be better in the team fights later <laughs> into the game than us, especially when you're playing into Orn, Oriana, Ash. But I suppose under the pressure, it does make sense. Uh, I think that for XL coming into today, this is something that they will very be quick to rectify. You know, we didn't get confident answers from Patrick, but I also understand he wants to keep his cards close mm -hmm. to his chest. Uh, and I'm expecting them to shift their approach. And I think that's what we, we are going to be looking at closely in the draft because one of the things that we typically praise XL for is their early game aggression, their agency that they often give their players. And that's why we thought it was so interesting to bring up SK's approach, right? Because their whole game plan seemed to be yesterday, we're down on our luck, we're very low on the scoreboard, let's just do something different that goes against convention. And they drafted, as you rightly said, trouble, just a lot of agency. So I'm hoping we see a lot more bloodshed in the early game. I'm expecting that to see a lot more like aggressive drafting from mm -hmm. both sides. Uh, and I'm curious if this first pick Callista will actually be a thing yeah. from the side of XL because teams clearly have an answer in the form of Ash, but also Draven is something that teams are willing to bring out. And Jezu has said to the world, I am happy to challenge you if you want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe in the box. It is a contested pick on both sides. He said it yesterday. Yeah. If we have Kalista, we instantly win. It's time for us to go into picks and then we're quickly, quickly going to discover if Kalista is going to be one of these openers here in this draft.